Um, this is the very last sculpture that he did, and it is larger than the ones uh, that you'll see in the gallery. It's the only one that is, the other ones are about 22 inches, this is about 10 inches more, right? Yes, uh, approximately. And again, uh, you'll see that he really did like the smaller ones. He was going to get quite large in his painting, in his sculptures, but then he died when he was 48. He died from appendicitis, and he couldn't get very far, although he did produce close to 4,000, uh, 3,000. Is it 3,000? Um, I think the number is inching upwards from 3,400. Okay, at 3,400. Okay, uh, what are called flat works, you know, which is the drawings, the paintings, the sketches, and so forth. <clears throat> Uh, he had 22, he produced 22 sculptures uh, or um, subjects. And of course, there were uh, many castings of a lot of them. Uh, this is the Bronco Buster, his most famous one. Uh, actually, uh, the, the interesting story about the Bronco Buster, it's the very first one he produced, and it's the most popular of all of them. Uh, in fact, it had, there are more, more castings of that than of anything else. Uh, and there is a little story, I guess that goes with that. He had a friend who was a sculptor. Uh, Frederick Remington never wanted to be a sculptor, he wanted to be a painter. Uh, and uh, he was, his friend su suggested, oh come on, you know, why don't you, why don't you try playing around with the clay? And so Frederick Remington did with some lessons and he produced the Bronco Buster as his first one. Now, that's absolutely amazing. I mean, this man had so much talent, he didn't know what to do with it. I mean, whatever he touched just turned into something fantastic. But uh, here, while we're here and it's quite large, I like to point out <coughs> and ask questions, what is so fantastic about Remington's work? Now, this is what you call, he's just, the horse is just on its back legs. And you can see that he's, this would be called cantilevered. Okay, there's a lot of space here. And he is one of the very rare, probably the only sculptors at this time, who was able to do something like this. He was able to get the balance, and it looks right. It doesn't look as if it's going to topple over. Okay, so this again is phenomenal. Um, the, um, the other thing that everybody's so aware of and, and uh, where the talent is, when you look at the detail, uh, the detail in the muscles in the horse, the detail in actually the clothing. You even see the belt with, with what? The folds of his shirt. The folds of the shirt. And he has a belt with actually the holes in the buckle, you know, there. Just really, he knew the horse, so the expression goes. And, I mean, there is, it is a perfect hope, perfect horse. Um, the, um, if it's a younger group, or for a lot of groups, I ask, you know, what is Bronco Buster, what is happening, okay? And here you have the cowboys taming the horse. Um, what is special, which I call a touch of genius in Remington, is that he adds a story and a little bit of tension to it. Now, when you look at this, uh, what's going to happen? Is the horse going to throw the rider off, or is the rider going to tame the horse? You can't tell, can you? And that is the beauty. It sort of grabs you. And you look at it, and when you think about it, it really creates a certain amount of tension in you, because you want it to be settled. You want to know what's going to happen, what has happened. And I mean, to me, that is a touch of genius. With Remington. I always make the comparison, comparison to uh, uh, Michelangelo's the creation of Adam. You know, you have Adam like this, and you have the God coming, right? God is coming down to touch his finger. He hasn't touched Adam yet. There's this mm. much of a space. Now, you believe he's going to touch him and bring him to life that you don't know, okay? And that's the tension, the expression that's there. So uh, let's just go on. 